Aaron and I are up in the beautiful hills of Western Idaho this morning. It's gorgeous. It's just starting to snow softly on us. And you can see there's snow already up here. And our whole goal is to gather some red twig dogwood branches. We're gonna do a little bit of foraging, not as much as we normally do. We typically come up here every year to gather greens and branches for containers, but I ordered all of my greens through the garden center this year just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. But I can't order branches, which is totally fine because coming up here to get red twig, it's easy. It's so plentiful up here. In fact, the spot where we stopped, I've already cut a little bit. It's so thick right here. I'll be able to get everything I need from this one location. And we usually make a whole day out of this foraging trip. In fact, last year, my mom and I came up here together um, and we had a picnic and took our time and it's just a really fun time to recenter yourself, get away from everything, come somewhere very peaceful, very quiet, and just refocus. It's just kind of needed this time of year. But Aaron and I are up here together uh, today, which is also fun, but we have to make it a fairly quick trip because I actually have an ultrasound appointment this afternoon, which I'm very excited for. So let me show you the branches I have and kind of the surrounding area. There's a creek nearby and I can hear the water. It's beautiful. And look at those branches. I don't know if you can tell, because the camera, it looks kind of dark. It is overcast right now, but they are a nice red color. And I think what I've cut so far, which took me about three minutes, will fill three pots. And I'm looking to fill our containers along the east side fence line, all 14 of them, which we've never done before. I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. Um, you know, just greens and branches, probably no lights. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. But typically those pots have been stored for the winter. But we got new containers that are concrete and very heavy. We already have daffodils planted in them. So we thought, oh, it'd be fun just to toss some winter festivity in there. It'll help insulate the bulbs actually, and it'll look really pretty. So you can see we're just starting to get into trees. We're just getting out of the valley here. But I don't even think we need to go up further where the trees are thicker because there's so many dogwood branches here. Let me show you the creek. It's so beautiful with the ice and snow. You can see the puffy clematis, wild clematis seed heads up in there. Okay, so now I just need to get after this. Um, all I'm using are my Felcos because I don't think I'm getting into anything super, super thick. I did bring a pruning saw, a reciprocating saw, um, and some other tools, but I don't even think I'm gonna need to use them. So anyway, this shouldn't take very long. All right, I think I got 14 containers worth. Look at these. It took 15 minutes, you guys. <laughs> That's it, to cut all these branches. And they all came from this spot right here. And you can barely tell I even took anything. It's crazy. Oh, it's gonna be so pretty. The snow is starting to pick up a little bit. It's coming down a little bit harder. I wish we could spend all day up here. It's so, so peaceful. But I am thrilled that we were able to get all the branches from this one spot. I did wanna mention, uh, as I did in our last foraging video, that if you are planning to go forage, definitely check the rules of where you're going to forage at. Sometimes it's not allowed at all. Sometimes you have to have a permit. And then in our particular area, this particular spot anyway, um, you can forage insignificant amounts for personal use. I think that was the verbiage on the website. Um, and that's typically all we're doing is just getting a handful and dogwoods benefit from a good pruning anyway. Like these will look so much more vibrant and pretty in this one little spot next year because their best color is on first year wood. Oh, I'd love to take some of these alder cones home too. Oh, there's just so many beautiful things up here. All right, so now I'm gonna go let Aaron know that I am done cutting. He told me, you cut what you want because I don't know exactly what branches and what shape and I will load everything for you. So, deal. It's your time to shine. Nice. <laughs> Aaron, yeah. now that all these branches are in the back of the truck, I don't know. You want more? <laughs> <laughs> Those condense down quite a lot. I really would hate to get home and not have quite enough to make it look, you know, thick enough in those pots. We got room for more. We do. It was so quick to cut those two. Yeah. I think we should go to a new spot though. Okay. All right. We found another good thicket of dogwood. It's just around the corner there, but look at these rose hips. Oh, I saw these from the car and I thought, oh my goodness, I might need to have some of these. Look at how beautiful. And the wonderful thing about rose hips is that they hold. 
<laughs> that's the thing. Like you can find elderberries up here and things like that and snowberries occasionally, but they just don't hold on the branches like rose hips do. And what beautiful color. That would be a pretty addition. I don't know if there's enough for 14 containers worth of rose hips or if I could fit that many in the car. Woo! Oh, there's ice right there. Holy moly. <laughs> anyway, I do have variegated holly that has berries in it, but the rose hips just show up so much better because there's no leaves to obstruct the view to them. Oh, but there's a whole bunch of beautiful dogwood. It's kind of down off the road though. I'm gonna have to assess how easy this is gonna be to gather. So this dogwood is kind of down in there. And you know, if I wasn't pregnant, I would go ahead and scale that. But I think I'm gonna try to stick close to the road if at all possible. I'm gonna walk up here a little bit, see what we can see here. I don't need that much more, I don't think. Yeah, see, I can gather this stuff right here. So I'm gonna harvest some of these hips, but I'm not gonna take full branches. I think just little stems right below each cluster. I'm glad I brought the pop-up bag. I've got an idea where I can use these. that's enough for 14 pots oh, I hope so <laughs> I did pick up some of the rose hips you guys and I decided not to take big long branches for containers I'm gonna use these in a different project I have something in mind and I just couldn't pass them up they're so gorgeous you want me to get out up there and weigh them down because I would be really good at that right now <laughs> well, I'm not sure either one of us needs to get up there I think I brought I brought twine I don't think we need twine I think we can get this Roll down. Okay. Do you want to just stand over there and... and oh, I do. I do want to stand over there. Hold on. Okay. Oh, it's perfect. I think I might even have time to get these unloaded and maybe started today before my appointment. I had no idea this was gonna go so fast. We just arrived back at home and these are the 14 containers along the fence line that I was hoping to be able to outfit for winter. Now the soil is a little bit frozen <laughs> right now and the whole reason, like we started to lose time. Our schedule was just such that we weren't able to get up to the hills until now. Usually I'm doing this a little earlier, um, but tomorrow is supposed to be 43, which is the warmest day of the whole week. So I'm hoping that if we could get everything organized tomorrow afternoon, probably after they've had a chance to kind of warm up a little bit and thaw out, hopefully I'll be able to uh, get all of the branches and everything put in these containers. So, you know, you might remember we planted 750 ice follies daffodils in these containers. So I only can put the branches down about five, six inches or so, um, which should be plenty, especially because I'll water them in a little bit and they'll all freeze in place. So what we're gonna do now is just unload all the branches and put a little pile by each one of the containers. And I'll see if I can get the branches in just one container so I can at least show you that part. Ah. I feel like it's gotten colder or something. What's Does that? it feel colder than it did this morning? It feels Does it? Yeah. Now we gotta try to divvy these up. Here he comes with some warm water. <laughs> hot water. Oh, is it hot? Oh my. Well, you guys, I just got the branches all distributed. So there's a pile next to each container. And I was just testing this out. It's not like frozen solid. Like I could. You pour some water in there? Well, sure. How much you want? Uh, let's just start with a little bit. I really don't want it to reach the daffs. 
in there. Is that good? Yeah, let it sit for a minute. I can see the steam. I just wanted to thaw it out a little bit so I could show you guys at least the branches in one container today. <laughs> and the rest of the pretty stuff will come tomorrow. You want any more? Um, like around the edges? Let me test it. Do you want to hold this for a moment? Sure. I don't think I need any around the edges. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was easy. I think there was like this much of maybe a frozen layer. Oh. I don't even know if we're going to need that. That's, yeah. Well, that's encouraging. <laughs> that means tomorrow my job will be a lot easier. I just even envisioned myself having to go back and forth from the house uh, with jugs of hot water or you going back and forth to the house. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, that worked out better than I thought. So let me finish with the branches in this container and then I'll give you a look. Oh, you guys, the scale turned out perfect. I know that they look a little scant at the moment until we get our greens in. Tomorrow we've got noble fir boughs, princess pine, incense cedar, and variegated holly with berries on it that we're gonna be putting in these containers. We may do some lights, we may not. That's the only thing I'm not sure about. You can see we've got lights on the fence, so I'm not sure that lights in the pots will be altogether necessary, but I think I'll try one see if it's worth the effort and then um, go from there. But I just love the height. I really wanted to make sure they were taller than the fence by quite a bit so that they showed up and they looked, you know, kind of large and bulky because this fence line is quite long and you really want things to be big enough to show up. That's why we went with the big containers. So in all, I used one, two, three, four, five. This was one, so six technically branches in this one pot so that's not that many six branches if you get ones that are like multi-branched like this they are bulky and they fill up space really fast and i'm just happy that aaron and i were able to get away this morning for at least part of our foraging trip i don't think i've ever skipped a year since i was a little kid it's just kind of part of the season it's a tradition for us to go up to the hills and um, do a little bit of foraging i mean however it was nice that we were able to order in boxes of greens because it's a lot more of a scramble when you need to forage for greens because you have to do a lot more hiking and climbing which is just something i knew that i wasn't going to be able to do this time of year but branches are easy when they're just right off the side of the road so anyway that's going to be it for today's video because like i said earlier i think i mentioned i have an ultrasound appointment this afternoon and we just wanted to make sure to get up to the hills and get home in time for that and i was happy to be able to um divvy all the the branches up um, and get them kind of ready for tomorrow because tomorrow we'll come back and we're gonna just deck these pots out and I am so excited now just seeing this just this alone makes me so excited for what is about to happen in these containers I think it's just gonna look so festive I always worry a little bit that I'm gonna do something new that I love so much that I'm not gonna want to skip it from year to year I'm gonna want to make it something I do every year so I always want to be careful like <laughs> The project I'm doing is this something sustainable that I will I will be able to do every year and it may not be um, you know every year is a little bit different I have simplified some things you know um, I made my trees a lot more simple inside I'm not uh, decorating near the amount of tabletops just because I'm not feeling it <laughs> and I think it's good to uh, feel free enough to do that that's one thing like with Benjamin growing up I really want to make sure that I'm flexible with traditions and not be so entrenched in whatever we do every year that um, something will feel like it's missing. I just want to be able to just go with the flow of every year and not that that's easy per se it depends on what's going on but um, I just want to be able to go with the flow and make whatever we're doing the most fun you know what I mean um, and so far this season has just been so much fun with Benjamin almost being three Anyway, I'm totally rabbit trailing here at this point. So I think I'm gonna end the video and go get ready for my appointment. I hope you guys enjoyed the escape up to the mountains and I hope that you're having a really fun time getting your homes prepared for the holidays, whatever that means for you guys. So anyway, we will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.